Hi guys and welcome back to Bite Size Excel. In this video we're going to take a look at the sequence function and we're going to look at a practical example of how you might use this in a workbook. More specifically we're going to look at how you can create a dynamic calendar. Now in this video we're going to start from a blank workbook so please do feel free to follow along. Now we're going to start with first looking at the basics of the sequence function. So we're going to type in equals sequence. And the way this is set up is you first specify the number of rows you want in your sequence. So in this instance, say we want 10. Then how many columns? And maybe we want 10 again. We want to start it at a number. So in this instance, one. And we're going to go up in steps of one. And this will give us a grid with the numbers of one to 100. Now what you can do is you can go back in say and change the steps to two and that means the numbers will go up, we'll go one, three, five, all the way up to 199. So this is the basics of how the sequence function works. So now that we've recapped on the basics, we're going to take this out and take a look at setting up our calendar. So we want this to be dynamic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create two cells here. I'm just going to drag this out to make it a little bit wider. I'm going to do one for the month and another one for the year. So let's just pick some colors here. So we'll pick this blue for the month. We'll pick this yellow here for the year. And then what we're going to do is we want this to be a drop down. Now there's two ways you can do a drop down. You can either list out your months here. So you would probably do this on a separate spreadsheet, but just for this particular example, we are going to do it in the same. So let's type January and then drag this down so that we get all the way to December. So this is going to be my list for my data validation. So let's open data validation, select list. So what we're going to do is we're going to click in here and we're going to select our range and click OK. And you can see now we've got our dates. I'm just going to make it a little bit clearer. So let's pick that yellow color so it's the opposite. We'll center it and actually let's make my entire workbook. Let's pick this text here and we'll make these a little bit bigger. So let's increase these to 14. And I'm just going to make my rows a little bit higher. And actually to make that look a little nicer, there we go. We want to do the same things for our years. So say for our year, we're going to start at 2020, for example, and say we want to bring it all the way up to 2050. Just drag this down. Actually, it's not going to work unless I put 2021 in here. So grab those first two and drag it down to hit 2050. That's going to be our list for our second data validation. So going back to data, data validation, select list. We're going to select this range here for our source and click OK. Now, actually, what you can do in your data validation, you can also put your values in here separated by commas and it will do the same thing. But now we can pick a year. So say we want, uh, hang on, let's just tidy it up a little bit like we did with the year. There we go. Uh, so say we want to know February 24 to be our starting month. So next we're going to just set up a table and say we want our table showing from Monday through to Sunday. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Let's take all these and center them and we're going to put a blue background net and apologies if you can hear banging in the background my neighbor has decided to build a fence I think this evening we're going to put the text on white actually let's increase these all to 14 similar to the other and to make it stand out a bit I'm going to put a nice fat border on this so go into more borders so we want to put this nice fat border on, but we want it to be white. Uh, we want outside and inside borders, click OK, get a nice fat border on there. And then we want six rows and all our columns. I'm going to color these in a nice light gray. I should go a little bit lighter than that. I'm going to set up that font color just for the contrast. And for our border, we'll then go with a thick border, maybe slightly less thick than the last time, make it white again. Select outside and inside, click OK. You can see that's set up now. And just to make this all look a little bit nicer, we'll come to our view tab. I'm just going to take the grid lines off. 
So essentially what we want to have is we want to have our table set up in such a way that our dates come in on the correct day. But what we're going to do first is we're going to create a little bit of a helper so to see what the first day of the month is. We're going to use a function called date value for that. So we're going to say equals date value. Then we are going to open it with one because we want it to be the first day of the month. And we're going to say and we want our month next. And then we want our year. So we're just going to select those two cells. We're going to close our bracket and hit enter. And you'll get this number in first. So we just need to change the format to a short date. So you can see now that that brings in the first date of that month and that year. So if I were to update this say to May, you can see now it's the fourth, the first of the fifth, 2024. Obviously, this is set up in UK date format rather than American date format. But the premise is the same. Essentially, what we want to do is we want to put our sequence function in here. So just watch what happens if I put in our we put in sequence, we're going to put in six rows, seven columns, because it's obviously seven days in the week. And just for argument's sake, we're going to pick this first day of the month. And then we're going to put one because we want obviously the days to go up in single days and hit enter. Uh, we will again format this, but in this instance, we're going to use our custom format. So if we come to number and custom, what we want in here is we basically want it to be just showing the day. So we just put a D in there. Click OK. Now, this is obviously going from 1 up to 31, which is what happens in May and then starts again. But we don't actually know if that's the right day. Is the 1st of May, May 2024 a Monday? We don't currently know. And what we need to use to find out is using the weekday function. Now, we do have a video on the weekday function if you want to watch it. I'll leave a link in the description below. But essentially, the way it works, so I'm going to do this over to the side. So we're going to say equals weekday. And we're going to pick that that first of the month date. And then you get a whole number of options. And in this instance, I want to know Monday through Sunday. So Monday through Sunday is this number two. So we're going to pick number two there. And then we're going to hit enter. And you can see a Monday is the third day. So it is a Wednesday. What we want is we want this one appearing over here. What we want in this first cell is this date minus two days. Obviously, this is three. So the way this can be built up is if we say equals the date minus the weekday function and plus one to give us that two and hit enter, you'll see that the 29th of the 4th, 2024 is two days before. So this will be the 29th. This will be the 30th. There's only 30 days in April. And then the first will be the Wednesday. So if we build this up with the actual bits of the function, so we're going to add in here the weekday bit. So I'm going to copy that and replace this G5 in here. And essentially what we want is this part of the formula to be the starting bit. So we're going to copy that there now. Uh, click Control and X. We are going to replace this A1 with that part of the formula. And we're going to hit Enter. And there you can see now that the first is falling on that Wednesday that it actually is. So we can now take out these cells. They were just help ourselves to explain how I build it up. Now there's a few things that we can do to make this look a little bit tidier. What we'd like to do is we'd like to hide the dates that aren't falling in the month. And we'd like to hide this. Now we can use custom formats to do this. I've recently released a few videos on custom formats. So if you'd like to know a little bit more about them, I'll again link them in the description below. But for now, we're going to hit Control 1. We're going to go to Custom. And if you want something to just show up as blank, the easiest way to do it is just to put three semicolons in here. So it basically means uh, if you've watched my previous videos, your positive numbers, negative numbers, zeros and text are all going to be formatted as just blank. We're going to hit OK. And you can see it looks like it's disappeared. But if you look in the bar here, you can see that it still appears. We want to do something similar here. So to do this, what we're going to do is we're going to use some conditional formatting. So we're going to hit New Rule. We're going to use a formula to determine the rule. And what we want to do is we want to say if equals the month of this one, and we're going to take out those dollar signs because we want it to actually move, is not equal to, so the month of our date. 
and we want that to remain static, so I'm going to leave in the dollar signs. We're going to go to format, and on the number formatting, we're again going to go to custom, and again put in those three colons, and click OK. Clicking one another bunch of OKs, and you can see that those have disappeared, but that formula is still in that first cell. So now we've got a calendar that automatically updates. So we can have a look at any month that we want. So say we want to go to June, we want it to be 2023. You can see that that's updated to the correct calendar. And we can get this all the way through to whatever year we want in the future. So it's just a really handy way to create a dynamic calendar within Excel. I do hope that you found this follow along video useful. Let me know if you'd like to see more like this in future. And as always, I'd love to hear that any questions that you might have. Do remember to hit the thumbs up button and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.